Don't do these things when you're game hunting. Please, these are, these are no-nos. Today I'm going to be going over a few things that are absolutely my game hunting pet peeves. Now the good thing is, this isn't just like reseller pet peeves, this is also pet peeves that we ourselves as collectors and people who go to swap meets or flea markets or garage sales, stuff that absolutely drives me insane as well and I know I'm guilty. So let's talk about it. Here we go! The first thing is something that buyers do, and it drives me absolutely insane to no end. I can't stand when I see people do it, and I've done it myself all the time. Let me show you what I mean from the seller side. When I hold a garage sale at my house, and I'm sitting around, and I'm waiting to sell stuff, and it's first thing in the morning, it's first thing, all right, here we are. Someone comes up, and they go, how much for this knickknack? Um, that's, that's a buck, you can take that for a dollar. And then they look around and nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. And then they hand you a $20 bill. Breaking a $20 bill is beyond frustrating when people hand me one. I'm like, do you have anything else? Do you have anything else here? And they're like, no, it's all I got. And I'm like, okay, well, that, that's cool. I, uh, I don't want to give you all of my change that I just went out and got last night. Now I know how annoying it is. And I do it. I've been guilty of it so many times. I... I like cringe at the fact when I'm handing them a $20 bill when I go to a swap meet and I'm like, I just went to an ATM, I'm so sorry, I just grabbed this $20 bill. I know I'm only buying a dollar worth of stuff, but can you break my 20? But I've noticed a lot of people catch on lately and be like, no, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna break this 20. Here we go! Next is one I don't even know if I would call it a pet peeve because it just angers me and gets me really mad. And that's when you're looking at the swap I meet and you know, I, I don't like to go in a rush. I don't like to go like in a frenzy. I like to go and take my time and look at the stuff and enjoy the experience of looking for video games or anything retro really. And when I'm doing so and I'm building myself like a maybe pile, kind of setting things around me and people come up in such a flurry, such a frenzy and they come over and they immediately start grabbing things that it's, I get it. If it's like not by me, but when things that are like clearly sitting right in front of me, I mean like almost in the palm of my hands, like on a table in front of me, and they just start reach, when someone reaches under you and starts kind of like, oh, excuse me, or they reach over you like, oh, is this, is this a thing, is this yours? Wow. This is actually kind of embarrassing. It makes me feel weird about myself. <laughs> I, I get really mad. I, I like people to have a personal space. I like people to, it's that's a weird thing with me. I'm kind of OCD. Even like when my kids and we're eating dinner and they kind of sit a little close and their elbows kind of come a little close. Hey, scoot over. I love you guys to no end, but I need I need some space. I, I like to, I like to have a little breathing room. And the same goes for the swap meet. It drives me nuts when people don't respect any space and they're up in your area and they're up in a frenzy. Oh my gosh, frenzy hunters to me is, uh, uh, what do I, how do I say it? They're probably in it more to get something to resell a little more looking for value than enjoying what retro gaming is, what retro game collecting really is. I get it, we've all been guilty. I've probably been guilty of like, I need this because it's worth this, but I, no matter what, I'll still, I will say you, you gotta kind of respect what people are doing. Even if someone is, why not just ask, hey, oh, hey, is that your box? Is that your, you building on that? Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Have a good one, man. No worries. Oh, good score over there, man. Nice. Nice. No, don't be, don't be a frenzy hunter. Don't reach under people. Don't reach over people. Don't snake people while they have their maybe pile built, okay? That's, that's, that's a common sense one, people. Come on. Here we go! Here we go. Time to call out some of my friends. Sorry, Ricky. <gasps> uh, sorry, Juan, Secret <gasps> Game Stash. I love you guys. I would hold you guys dearly any time of the year. But with that said, I'm sorry, but I gotta say it. When people are grabbing off trucks and grabbing off people's stuff before the seller is even set up. I know a lot of people do it, okay? I'm saying it right now. I know a lot of my friends do it. I can't do it. Even when Ricky says, Ricky, I love you. I love you. Yeah. But when you're like, hey, we should go to the swap meet at 530. And like, you know, sometimes if you wait by the trucks and see what they're pulling out, I can't do it. I know it's okay. It's not necessarily bad. I just, I can't stand it. 
I know me even when I have a garage sale at my house and like I'm not set up and people start walking up and how much is it? I'm gonna stop go I'm not ready I know you're trying to get a deal it's cool but give me a little a little space I've been to uh, conventions before where certain sellers youtubers I won't say names for any bad reason but I even remember Ricky one time trying to buy something off him while he was still setting up a friend youtuber of ours and you could see him legitimately get mad and be like hey I'm not set up. I'm not set up. Don't ask me for prices yet. I'm still getting this figured out. I know a lot of times that's how you get good deals. I know. I know. I will admit it. That's maybe, maybe even some people would call that a tip for game collecting is to show up early and grab the stuff. I'm all about showing up early. I love showing up early. But when someone, when they're like finishing and stuff, but I mean, I'm talking when like people are still pulling up. Like they're still pulling up to the, like their, their truck is barely done backing in and they're like, <laughs> like, like little, like, you know, the, the truck's pulling up and they're like out of the corners, like, huh, what do you got? You got games in there. You have any Nintendo games? He's here. He's arrived. Again, this one, take it however you want. I will say, like I said, some people might consider this an actual tip, but for me personally, remember this list is my pet peeves while game hunting. What do you got? You got games in there. Here we go. All right, sellers, you need to put a little more effort into this one. This is a big one. Game cases, game cases that have the wrong discs inside of them. I know it happens, we've all done it where we are putting things together, selling DVDs or something or some games, PS2, like a big lot of games, and you're trying to sort things out, but every once in a while one might slip past the cracks and you might put the wrong game inside. A recent example for us is when we went to Cypress College and Gabo got a Wii game, a $40 Wii game, he got it for 10 bucks, LA Machine Guns. New York, something like that. I didn't know it was worth anything, but he got it for 10 bucks. He was super excited and he brought it over and it was the wrong disc inside and we were kind of laughing. That's so funny, Gabo. Go have it over there somewhere. Go get it back. He didn't have it. What was it, Pirates of the Caribbean? <laughs> I found out it was uh, some Lego game. And I was like, really? And then all of a sudden, he has to go back and he's like, oh, don't worry, I got the game. He's gonna have the game. He goes over there. It's when we went back to his booth and we were looking for the game and we quickly realized that like 80, and I'm not joking, like 80% of the seller's games were in the wrong case. He doesn't have the game. And uh, yeah, like you said, he would have had a, a $40 game for 10 bucks. And he walked out and it was like Lego Pirate. Gabo makes me, by the way, look with him through every single game. The game wasn't in there. Every game and we looked, never we looked through every Wii game to see if it was in there and dude like 50% of the games were in the wrong case. <sighs> like I said, I get it when things slip through the crack, especially if you're not like a video game seller and that's not like what you do. You might not have any idea what's even in there. You know, if you're just a person selling your first time at a garage sale, first time selling at a swap meet and you're just throwing random games around. That I get, that I understand more, but when it's like you're a seller and you like sell video games at your booth, that's what you do month after month, year after year, and still all of your video games are in the wrong cases, that makes me worried. Like, do you know how many people probably went home who didn't check? Like a mom or dad who doesn't really think too much to look inside of the case. <sighs> There's so many of these. Oh my gosh, I feel like I could go on for 20 days. I had five of these. Maybe I'll do a part two. Here we go! Biggest pet peeve for sure, no matter what of all time, is when you're at a swap meet, a flea market, wherever, and you hold up a game and you can tell they have no idea what the game is worth and they throw out a price for no reason whatsoever at all. They just throw it out with no any bit of knowledge, not even like a of knowledge of why they're picking this price for this game. I don't get it. And the funniest thing is too, when they do that nine times out of 10, they're stuck on that price and they even sometimes have the guts to say, it's a good price. You have no idea why you just told me this game was $40 versus $10. Something I struggle with a lot of times is I'm not like a conf confrontation type person. So when people do things like this and they're like, oh yeah, that game is 40 bucks. In my mind, when I know it's clearly not a $40 game, I struggle with, do I enlighten them? Just so, you, just so you know, buddy, this game's only worth $10. It came out in 1992. There's plenty of copies in circulation. I see them at every booth. 
should I do that or should I do I do what I do nine times out of ten and I just under my breath I'm like oh you idiot and walk away. I feel like if I did the nice thing and told them what it's really worth a lot of times I end up uh, I might come across a way I don't want to come across. I like to be, I'm a pleaser. I took one of those personality tests. My personality is a pleaser. You know, I'm one of those guys. It's like, you did a bad job today, son, but I love you. And I'm not saying these people need to do some crazy amount of research, but it's one of those bittersweet things because we used to get upset when eBay and all those things started coming around and offer up and Google and video games price charts because we would be like, oh no, they're looking up the price. They're going to know. But at the same time, sometimes you get the reverse of that and they have no idea and they overcharge. So where's, where's the fine line in this one? Yeah, that's probably my most angry actually. I don't like it at all. I get mad and I probably say things under my breath that, that, that I shouldn't. Forgive me, Father, for I have forsaken thee. Here we go! I don't like to yell, I'm not a ranter, but those are my pet peeves. Hey, and me included. Some of those things I do as well, and I've probably done more than once, and I'm not proud of it, but hey, we gotta call ourselves out for the things we do wrong sometimes, okay? It's okay to do it sometimes. We gotta tell ourselves, we did this wrong, it's time to be better. I'm gonna break my $20 bills from now, and I'm gonna go into Stater Brothers at 5.30 in the morning, where I normally withdraw money and say, can I get a pack of gum and break it here? That's my pet peeve promise. What's your pet peeve promise? What are you gonna change that you've done bad? Also, let me know your pet peeves. That's it. All right, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and that's it, and <laughs> peace out, Cub Scout. That's not a good one. Everyone says peace out, Cub Scout. Peace out, burnt trout.